What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore Project Ozone 3 Episode 8 and straight into, I believe, the Death Ingot. Now this did end the last series because I screwed it up. I didn't realise or I forgot that if you take it out, as in of the crafter, it actually uh, blows up anyway. I thought you still had that time. So what I need to do is take it out. You can see it's ready to go there, but it won't start counting down until you grab it. You get 10 seconds, but when you're actually doing it, especially in hardcore, it feels like half a second. And then you surround it with the items and boom, we did it. Now we've done it once. We've done it once. It doesn't mean that we won't screw up next time. And I decide to try it again. Divide by diamond. The moonstones are... It's definitely doing it this way, although it's dangerous, it's worth it because we've just got 19 for the price of two of those moonstones. But yeah, two celebratory dances there. We did not end the episode uh, using divide by diamond for a change. Uh, it has killed me in the past. Uh, it didn't this time. Not yet anyway. I don't know how many we have to do. Some mod packs actually allow you to use gold instead of iron. And it make it a stable ingot, which is safe. This mod pack does not have that. We did manage to fill up the farm. Or the grass, sorry, on the left-hand side. You can see on the mini-map there. It is full now. And that is, for now, the maximum amount of grass. Or the soiled grass dirt, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use, I have started, or at least I have tilled a farm there uh, to do some automations, very basic, very soon. But for now, it's still going to be manual and we need a lot more hemp. And as you can see, just while I'm chucking away a lot of the crap that we don't want, very manual, unfortunately, but it is just one of them things. It's part of the expert packs. You do have to start off manually and work your way up to automations. But it also makes it feel a lot better when you do get there. Or at least it does me, anyway. A lot of these scrolls are rubbish. The only scrolls I am keeping are the... experienced ones. The Tomes of Knowledge, whatever you call Now, I only take the top lid off with the hemp seeds. If you do that, they will continue to grow. You won't have to be planting them. If you take out the bottom, you will get extra resource as well. But then you'll have to replant everything. So, up to you, but I just want to get an absolute crap ton of this stuff because we're going to need many, many sails. Um, I mean, I'm going to go for at least four or five windmills um, to start with and see how we go from there. And then look at solar panels after the fact. There is, obviously, the opportunity to go immersive engineering and using the diesel generator, which is decent. But to actually make the diesel, it is a pain in the ass, IMO. So I'm probably not going to do that unless I have to. At the minute, the water wheels are keeping us going, but we do need to take the next step to windmills ASAP. So over to our next store adventure now, and that is refined storage, which is one of, I think, two or three mods that I've added on top of Project Ozone 3. And that is only because since I've used it, using uh, applied energistics really triggers me because it's just so messy compared I do prefer refined a lot more. Now, it is easier technically because, of course, it's not going to have amended recipes to a point. Some of them I've amended myself just to use more diamonds or more iron, quartz, etc. But it's nowhere near expert level pack um, to do. And the reason for that is really it's just to try and help get a, a story system up and running sooner rather than later so that I haven't got a thousand draws and thousand chests of things that I have to go through to make the videos more interesting that everything is all in one place so you can see it without having to wonder so all of these drawers there you can see I'd like to get them inside a storage system of course whether we can afford to make the drives to actually hold this much stuff I don't actually know how many items I have I just know that I have visually a lot of different items but yeah a lot of the ingots uh, I'm having to shove in random spots because it, the drawers keep getting filled up. So instead of making a load of storage upgrades or drawer upgrades, I'm just going to try refine storage and see if and how far we can get. If we can get one drive with eight 
1k drives in it so 8000 storage be a nice start firstly though we need to do some simple things like get string and with that done i made two drives accidentally they, they, they weren't that expensive you can see over there you the trees with even more string ready to go on i'm using the silkworms to get a very large amount of string but we now have the drive controller we have two of the drives themselves uh, all we need next is the actual terminal the crafting terminal or just the, the terminal the crafting terminal obviously allows you to craft which is definitely the better one um, but we we need to get those as well still continuing on with the refined storage making the crafting station now hopefully they finally got all the bits i need i did make some draw upgrades uh i only went up to gold because we have a lot of so uh, sorry a lot of iron and gold so i made a few gold ones because looking at the actual numbers that are in there especially from the ingots alone um, they're not going to fit in the drive even if i max out both of them i don't think i think we've probably got We've definitely got 8,000 worth of, uh, of ingots because the sieving process that we've been doing is giving us many, many <laughs> thousands of iron ingots. Just not as many of the others. But the drives are pretty simple. Silicon redstone, iron quartz, and glass. Glass is always something that I forget to keep stock of, but I didn't do too bad there, it seems. Uh, so glass, obviously, silicon you can get from cooking, uh, no, grinding sand, right? Cooking sand obviously makes the glass. And then the quartz is just nether quartz, uh, three nether quartz to one iron ingot, which is a bit costly on the nether quartz and will cause us problems in the future. So they're cleaning up a little bit now because the drives actually don't stack. I can just do that now maybe i should have gone for eight but why not just go all out they don't go there they go in there each one holds eight so there you go there's eight thousand and eleven so that's storage for eleven thousand items plus four more so fifteen thousand items that's not a bad start now again it would be a lot slower start if there had been an expert pack recipe but it's not so but it just makes the uh, managing of the goods a lot better. And for me, the way I play it, it's just more fun. I will, of course, build the IE2 stuff for the quest in the future. I would like to try and complete all of the quests, depending on how the series goes. And also, if we if we actually ever get to the Chaos Dragon and destroy it, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the series if people want to see me build or do something special, or if we haven't finished the quests. So the next bit's very therapeutic, especially if you've been waiting a while, and even more so if this had been a expert pack where it took me thousands of hours to get there, but not so much in this case. Though it has been a while, so all you need to do now is break the boxes and all of the goodies will come out. We then chuck them into the machine and hope that it doesn't fill up too fast. You can see the drives filling up there on the right-hand side. Five down already, six down. So 6,000 items stored already. Uh, apart from the wood, the rest of them shouldn't have that much in there. And yeah, um, it's pretty much full. We've got a lot of it. You can see there's no wood in there though. So we are way off what we actually have stored, but it's a start. I think now what I can do is, yeah, you can see all that stuff down on the side here. And there's even more in this chest as well. That didn't last very long, and the reason for that is because I moved it. I got the windmill set up now. I used, basically, I used the refined storage to do a bit of crafting because it's a lot easier when everything's together. You can see there's a couple of pipes, uh, fence posts at either end to extend if I need to put two more in. They then come into what is some gold energy pipe. Again, it's a lot easier to build this sort of stuff when it's in a, a machine like the refined storage. Move the portals along here. Of course, there are like the nether portal. That's in that uh, waystone thing, so I don't need to worry about that. The mob farmers have a few... I don't know why the, the, the that thing's freaky as hell. No matter where you put it, it does some weird stuff. You can see there are bins set up as well that I did off camera. 
Um, it's really boring stuff. It's just basically setting a filter for deleting everything I don't want. Then when it was full, another filter. And when that was full, another filter over and over again. So that's why I'm not showing it. Because I can't imagine anybody wants to watch that. Uh, and then still over here, trying to remember to cut down the dirty plants. And the other things are going strong as well. Upgraded the furnace to be the blast furnace just use steel which we obviously have plenty of because that's what it's building and it's automated so you can see there on the left hand side the bonsai tree is growing wood automatically then goes into the coke oven that goes over to the furnace and then all you have to do is provide the furnace with some iron which i put in the top through that yes there we go um that goes into it and it's just basically an automated way of doing it as long as the creosote doesn't back up that will just continue to do its own thing at the stage, at the point that it does start to back up with Creo, so I'll just put a dustbin in a trash can and delete it. Managed to get the furnace up to Emerald, so it's faster, and got some of the low-end upgrades in there. To be honest, they're all really easy to build, apart from the double one that requires another stars. And then I've just chucked in an automation for the cobblestone generator to give us some lava. Not much, just one tank full really you can see these are now 4k again when i had it in there with the 1k nothing fitted anyway so i used the time and just micromanaged it to get 4ks then when that was done i moved it over to this center got the power cable extended over and went from there this isn't necessarily the final setup of what things are going to be like likely the refined storage will be there forever but the other things will likely not to be uh, we already know that the automated sieve and all that sort of stuff should be going as soon as we can start mining actual resources from an actual body of land that has actual ores. Um, there are a lot of actuals there. You can see, though, the windmills were expensive. I've still not done the sales because they still require a lot more. Oh, there you go. I'm showing it. A lot more of that hemp. You need eight hemp to make the sticks that makes one of those you need then five of those to make one sale and each windmill needs eight sales uh, so i need 35 sales in total because i have five windmills and i can push it to seven but i don't think i'm going to bother because we'll see how they work and especially if they're upgraded they'll give us a small amount and we have that capacitor bank now that you saw at the beginning as well which means that any extra power that we do get which to be honest is quite a lot because we're not really using it will be stored So 23 of those, they do not go on there. I obviously am a bit thick. That is not how this works. Oh, it is. Yeah, you see, I don't even know what I'm doing. I have played this game before, honest. So that was 28, and we need 35, right? So it's not far off. We can do three. Three of the five. And you will see a noticeable difference. When I run away and turn around, you will see a noticeable speed difference between them there you go and of course i'm not sure how much it's, it's at least double uh apparently it's spawning mobs as well though it's at least double the original so it's worth it but we're going to need a lot more hemp to finish them off permanently and then completing the first step on the hearts so the red hearts you make uh it's red yellow green and blue and of course, that is now 10 red. So we have 10 red hearts available to us. Put them in the red hearts necklace, and that will increase us now. You can see we actually have 10 orange hearts. Each heart is obviously one health or two, two hits, two ticks of damage. Now, the next plan of attack I'd like to do is the Twilight Forest and bang out the bosses there, because we are going to need the resources from the Twilight Forest to do the armors. But also, uh, the Twilight Forest itself is a good place to get some resources, not loads, but some. To go there, though, we need to make this Glimmer Crystal instead of the Diamond. So, the Glimmer Crystal you throw in the well you make, and that's how you get to the Twilight Forest. Now, I probably should have thought this through before I did that whole uh, Embers episode and then ripped it all down. Luckily, though, it shouldn't take too much to set this up just to make this one thing. We have the ash already. 
So all we need is some of the crystals, the aspect, which again, we already have. The crystals we already have. The, we have all of the machines and everything that is required, I believe. Maybe we're a pedestal short, but that's not something that's too difficult to make anyway. So I've just thrown it in the middle of anywhere because we're only doing it for the once. As soon as we get that glimmering crystal, we don't need another one. Or at least I don't believe we'll ever need another one. But the one is enough to get us to the Twilight Forest. At that point then, we can try and do the Waystone and make it so that we can travel there using the Waystone. Now the beam cannon is the thing that starts it. So on the right hand side you can see that pedestal surrounded by two columns. The pedestal in the centre is where you put all the gods that you need to make the thing. And then the columns either side is where you put the ash in order to burn the said thing. This, we already know, is the actual machine that makes the embers. Now I'm not going to go along the lines of setting up the steam thing where it had the whole lava floor. Because that's excessive for one, technically two crafts. Because we're going to craft it once and we will use the wrong amount of ash. Uh, then, when we've crafted it the once, we'll know how much ash to use. And the second time, it will craft correctly. You do, of course, need redstone signals to make all of this work. And it's really <sighs> not the best fun. I really don't like this mod that much. I think it's just because I don't know it, as opposed to there's nothing wrong with it, and it is when it's working, it looks really cool. Um, but personal preference and all that. So it should be ready to go now. Remember, when you're starting with the ash, always start with the minimum amount required. So for the glimmer crystal, you can see there, 64 to 80 is required. So start at 64, or you could technically start at 80. Just start at one of the ends. And then when you've got your results and it tells you it's this many wrong, you know exactly what the answer is. Now we need to provide it with, of course, all of these good days first. And the aspectus needs to be on the on top of each of those columns to, there you go, dawn stone aspectus, 64 to 80. So if we were really lucky and it was just actually 64, it would work the first time. But I don't think that's, it's never happened to me anyway. Um, so you put the aspectus on the column. It's actually called a pedestal, but yeah. And then you need to put the ash inside it, which I believe I've already done. One stack of. This works by using each of its individual sides. So you can see there the... And it does put them in uh, in a stack, so you have to separate them. It's really annoying. The, the, yeah, the, or you can just throw them on the floor like an idiot. And so one by one, there we go. That's set up. And then when you trigger, the beam blaster fires it and triggers it. Now, although that other pillow pedestal is lit up, there isn't actually anything in there. It's just because it's there. It then does this craft and you will get either a completed item or you will get a faulty item. And if you get a faulty item, it tells you how many you're off. So you know how to do it correctly the second time. And if you do it right the first time, it just works. And there we go. We've got an alchemical waste, so it failed, and it says 12. So we did 64. We now know that we need 76. So you have to do the whole process again, but this time use 76 of the ash. Only 64 can go in one pedestal, so you will need to use both of those pedestals. You will also need two aspectors so that each of the pedestals is uh, firing the right aspectors for that ash. Yeah. So, exactly the same process, you just need to add to that number. And if you do that and then do exactly the same process for fire the beam cannon, you should end up somewhere like this. So we're now doing exactly the same process. You can see a spectus on each of the pillars. Everything's working great. The reason I'm excited is because I may or may not have forgotten to put the second one on there. Uh, but yeah, we have that glimmering crystal now and it's also showing that we have the quest of my really cool black armor. So what you then have to do, just like similarly where you use this, but you use a diamond, it's now the crystal. And boom, we now have a teleport. Twilight Forest. And here we are arriving in the Twilight Forest for the very first time on one day 112. 
Now, I am, of course, going to work my way through the bosses, but similar to last season, I'm, I'm pretty sure, from the views anyway, um, that people don't want to see the whole process. So, I'll just run through the bosses at the end with them dying. Um, if anybody wants to see the actual full fights, I can arrange for that to happen, but for the series, I don't see the point. It's not part and partial. It's not a Twilight run. It's just a mod pack. So... We'll obviously kill them. The first one, of course, is the Naga, the snake-looking thing. After that, you then have to go through the Lich Queen and the various bosses. Getting trophies along the way, and it's always nice to have trophies. Just clearing the space now, because this new scratch really gets on my nerves. Just built myself a mine, uh, just in case I could get lucky. From the last series, though, I did mention um, that for some reason the Twilight Forest's ore generation is pants. Now, that is not normal. Normally, when you come to the Twilight Forest, it is smothered in ores. Diamonds are everywhere, uh, at this level anyway, um, and other things. But it seems in this mod pack, it's not. So, don't expect to get here and have a crap ton of ores. However, coming from a void world... We do now have a way of easy vein mining dirt and stone. So, there's one positive. Just doing a bit of digging to see if there's anything I spot that's useful. Titanium, silicon. It's not the end of the world. It's not something that we can mine anyway, along with os osmium. Uh, that is metallurgy stuff that is a way off yet. Um, I do like the metallurgy stuff, actually. It's a really good mod. Especially the windmills, they look cool. And I always make a crap ton of them. And put them very high. Because obviously the higher you put them, the better they work. Ring of m magnet as well from Britannia. Nice and easy to make, actually. A bit of glass and some mana, mana ingots that you get from mob drops anyway from the mob farm. Brilliant um, in terms of... You can see this. I love the uh, blue and red spectacles, like the old-fashioned magnets that you saw back in the day. And it's great as well it holds a good amount i think it caps out at about 300 items so as long as you have less than 300 items they will follow you uh, everywhere apart from through teleports and stuff we did get a massive chunk of rock crystals as well and there's a lot more rock crystals that i found here so we won't have to struggle for them but i'm not picking them up because they don't stack and they make a right mess that is a boundary line that means i can't go there yet because i haven't unlocked it so if i go in there i'll start getting blind blinded i'm not sure if that's an actual word but anyway uh, uh, and damaged so we'll stop there and come back and the first boss to do in the twilight forest or let's say boss is the rainbow ram ram trophy now that one's normally the hardest to do not because of difficulty for damage or anything but because you've got to find it first uh, we got very lucky and it's actually just outside where our teleport is so that we can do and to do so we need to get every single color of wool all 16 colors of wool apply them to him he will look really strange and long uh, and we'll get some diamonds gold etc from him as well as a crew crumble horn and his trophy from there we will then go through and take down his brethren in order but we are at time for this episode, so we're going to have to do that in another episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, take care. Goodbye.